Hey, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we will be talking about every single fate bound in the game, except for the red legendary fate bound, because it's kind of like a hidden equipment in this game. So they don't allow you to know what fate bound it is before you actually get the equipment yourself. So we will be only analyzing the equipment that you can get or you can craft from the NPC using the card materials. For most fate bonds in the games, you do want to keep them in your bank as ready to use equipment so you can try them out anytime for every single characters that you have and for every single skills that you have. Because even though the fate bond says that it works for an AoE skill, it doesn't work for every single AoE skill in the games. The same thing for melee skills and also projectile skills. So you only need to try it out yourself whether it works for your specific skills or not and because they can stack with each other the, the fate bounds so you need to try it out whether it works exactly as you hope it to be or it just not as what you expect it to be so in this video i'm not going to show you how every single fate bond will look like when it works but if it's worth showing i will show you how it works like if it's really important for you to see it for yourself otherwise if it works exactly as described in the in the fate bond description then i will just give you a scenario so you can picture yourself how to use this particular fate bond and how to maximize its potential so we're going to start off with the four fate bonds that can potentially increase your dps by twice which is echo casting twin novae backlash and onslaught so the fate bone description of echo casting is that at regular intervals casting a skill will cause it to be recast and if you go to the fate bone items uh, the benefit of getting two pieces to uh, three pieces is that you reduce the cooldown from 5 seconds to 2.5 second cooldown. So this is among the three fate bounds that double your DPS. This is the only one that has a cooldown. The reason because echo casting works for almost every skill in the game, including your charge up attack. I don't know why they consider your charge up attack to be a skill, but it works for your charge up attack too. So that's why the advantage of echo casting is that it works for more skills compared to Twin Novae and Backlash. But it only happens every 2.5 seconds. So this is really good for a skill that has a long cooldown. Or if you use a character where you only cast a single skill and wait for uh, your skill to finish cooldown until you cast it again. So it's not going to benefit you much if you are like spamming your skill in succession because only one of those skills will get the echo cast in that 2.5 second cooldown. But um, also there are some things that is interesting on echo casting. Like obviously if you cast a buff, you even if echo casting can work for buff, there is no benefit for you casting the buff twice because that doesn't mean that you will get double the buff. It will probably just going to refresh the duration of the buff, but because they are cast at almost the same time, it does nothing for you. And some skills like the melee skills that have animation, the animation only happens once, like this rolling skill. Like the rolling only happens once and then the damage comes uh, twice. Uh, but there are some skills like this shield charge that makes you charge twice. So obviously you need to try on your skills by yourself whether you like using this echo casting for your specific skill or not. And some skills like this uh, jump attack, it doesn't get benefit from echo casting at all. Like, I, it's going to be really funny if you can see this guy jump twice, but it doesn't work like that. So you just gotta have to try yourself on your uh, skills, whether you actually shoot twice or you only shoot once, and whether you get the benefit of the echo casting or not. Next we go to Twin Novae. 
Finovai says that your AoE skills can trigger twice, but if you go to the Fatebone items here, it says that only specific attacks can trigger twice, so you need to try it yourself on your character skills, whether this Fatebone works for your character skill or not. And the benefit of going from 2 pieces to 3 pieces is that you no longer have the damage offset. So the damage offset here, the number says it works like this. So if the damage offset says it goes by 75%, that means that if you usually deal a thousand damage, that means that you will now deal only 750 damage. It goes down by 25%. So if you have the three pieces set of Twin Novi, you will deal your usual 100% damage. So the way to test this skill is that you first build your skill to your uh, dummy here and see your skill animation. You can see that there is only one uh, lightning circle on my character. Now if I equip my Twin Novi, then I can see that I have two lightning circles on my character. And I can literally see that my damage number comes out twice more often. And you can also try even further because this Twin Novi works with echo casting sometimes, sometimes. So you need to try it yourself. So if you can actually see three lightning circles on your character, that means that this Twin Novi works together with echo casting. So you will get three times more damage than your usual standard skill cast because you actually cast your skill three times at the same time. So that's the strength of Twin Novi. Now for a thief, you can even take it further. With the tactful swoop, it will uh, trigger your skill one extra time after you do a dash. So with this, you can see that my usual DPS is now 3,000, 5,000. 50,000 years and if I dash and use this, you can see that I can go up until 58,000 years. So there is an extra one more electromorphosis that happened here. The next one is Backlash. This one works exactly the same as Twin Novi, but whereas Twin Novi works only for specific area attacks, this one works for specific melee attacks. Attacks. So, not because something is a melee attack, it doesn't mean that it can be triggered twice by backlash. You just gotta have to try it yourself. Like for example, if I do a melee attack here, it got triggered twice, but this falling attack doesn't get triggered twice. The same thing happened with this best attack. But this skill, the jumping attack, that doesn't work with uh, echo casting before now works with backlash. That's why you just gotta have to try it yourself which one works together or which one works for specific skill or not. Next one is Onslaught. So this one is a little bit tricky compared to all the fate bonds that we have uh, discussed earlier. This one makes dot skills take faster. But the understanding of dot skills in this game is different with all the other RPG games that we have played uh, before this. So, uh, our understanding about dot skills are usually skills that we put on the enemy, a debuff most of the time, and we just leave it alone and it will deal damage by itself. So, obviously it works the same for uh, burn damage and poison damage in this game, but this time, it also works for certain skills. So if you see on the description of skills in this game, like it says uh, everything that you need to know, but sometimes there is a description that says 0.5 second between ticks. So if you see here in the Onslaught Fatebound items description, two-piece set effect says overtime effect stick rate offset by 70 uh, percent, and then the three-piece set uh, says overtime effect stick rate offset by 50 percent. So what does it do is that for all the skills that have a description of 0.5 second between ticks, 
it will get reduced by 50%, meaning that now if you have a 3 set phase fadeboard effects of onslaught, it offset the overtime effect state by 50%. That means that this one, this skill that has 0.5 seconds between ticks, now will deal damage every 0.25 seconds per damage tick. That means that it doubles your damage output. So every single skill that have this description, 0.2 seconds between ticks, you just gotta have to divide it by half which it says here that the onslaught rate offset effect is 50%. So if you only have two piece set uh, for onslaught fade bound here, it will only offset the rate by 70%, which means that it will be uh, somewhere around for this one 0.2 will be somewhere around 0.15 or something. So if you have like uh, the three set fade bound effect of onslaught that means that now instead of dealing damage every 0.2 seconds for this electromorphosis it will deal damage every 0.1 second so you the way you test this is that as usual you're gonna have to put all the onslaught uh, effect that you have in here and then you will see that the damage now will take faster. Oh, first, I need to take this off. So I'm gonna show you the damage of this one without the onslaught. And then with the onslaught, you can see that the damage will take even faster. And I have to wait for the cooldown now. Okay. You can see that the damage takes faster. And you can also see that the DPS increase by twice. Now it's getting more interesting because usually some of this skill that have a tick effect is also considered as a melee skill. So this is a boreal flicker, it bleeds forward and deals up to 6 instances of all damage to enemies and this is a melee skill and it deals damage every 0.15 second. So if you have a bad class that means that you will deal damage twice, one from Onslaught and the other one is from the back class. So you can see that kind of number now. So the way to know that if both effect works, you just gotta have to take them out one by one. Like for example, now I have the Onslaught effect here. Now, if I have, wait, I'm gonna take out the onslaught first. So this is the normal skill, ticks. So you can see that it ticks very, very slow. Now, if I give this uh, onslaught, then you can see that it's going to be faster and you deal more damage. Now, if I take off this onslaught, and I'm gonna just have the back class. You can also see that every attack that I made will deal twice the hit, like twice the number of hits. That means that both back class and onslaught works for this skill. So if I use the boat, that means I will have double the effect from onslaught and back class which means I'm going to deal three times, no, four times more damage using onslaught and back class. That's why for certain skill, like this whirlwind slash, it becomes brainless. Because just like the boreal slash just now, this skill is also considered a melee skill and also a dot skill because there is a 0.25 second between ticks description here. But unlike the Boreal Slash, this one doesn't have a cooldown. So you just can keep casting this indefinitely as long as you have mana. So this is how much takes ideal per second you have And this is how much takes ideal if I have both Onslaught and Backlash as my fate bound. 
This is why Whirlwind's class is really, really popular. Like, it's very easy to guess uh, which fate bomb is going to double or quadruple your DPS in Whirlwind's class. You can just keep on spinning to win. So for skills that doesn't have the description of certain seconds between takes like this fire blade ward, even though this is the same spinning thing, but it doesn't get the benefit of the uh, onslaught. It does get the benefit of the backlash though. So you just gotta have to try every single fate bomb, just like this fire blade ward, which is affected by the backslash, but not the onslaught. But the Whirlwind Slash doesn't get affected by Twin Novi and Echo Casting. So if I have Echo Casting on my skill here, on my Fate Bound, I am going to cast the Fire Blade twice. So if I want to increase my Fire Blade more damage, I need Backslash and Echo Casting. While if I want to use Whirlwind Slash, I need to use backslash and onslaught. So you just gotta have to be creative and think about which skills do you want to use the most. So those are all the fate bounds that can potentially increase your damage by double or even triple or quadruple your DPS if you can stack them together. So you need them in your bag and just try out for every single skill that you have, whether they can work or not, or whether they can stack with each other or not. Next, we have Blowout and Epicenter. And I grouped them together because they work exactly the opposite of each other. Blowout will increase the uh, AoE range of your skill and epicenter will reduce the AOE range of your skill and you need to put them in your bank because it doesn't work for every single melee attacks and AOE skills you just gotta have to try it yourself whether it works for your skill or not but the good news is that if one fate bound works that means the opposite one will also work for that skill so you just gotta have to test one to see if the other one will work for that skill set or not. So the blowout, uh, to read the fate bond description here, we need to go back to the Twin Novi description. So we know that damage offset by 75% in the Twin Novi here means that your damage will get reduced by 25%. So you now will deal 75% of your usual damage to your enemies. So in this blowout scenario, if you hit enemies from 10 meters range, that means that a range offset by 170% means that you will increase your range by 70%, which now makes you able to hit enemies from 17 meters apart. But for epicenter, there is no advantage for if you only reduce the AoE range from using this skill just like the blowout, like if it works just the opposite of blowout, that means that nobody is going to use epicenter. So in turn of reducing your AoE range, it increased your damage offset by 240%. Which means that now you will deal 2.4 times more damage with your skill. This is even stronger than all the fate bonds that we have discussed earlier. This is stronger than Echo Casting, Twin Novi, Backslash, and Onslaught. Because it has 40% more damage compared to all those fate bonds. But the disadvantage of using this epicenter is that you will reduce the range by 40%, which means that now you will almost likely will not hit anything apart from uh, enemies that is right beside your character. So there are two situations where you want to use blowout and epicenter. So if you are familiar with the dungeons in this game, you have two stages. The first one is the moment where you kill all the normal enemies, like the adds. Uh, all the enemies, like whether you are in the normal dungeon or in the Valkyrie dungeon, you will have a 
ton of enemies to kill before you reach the boss room. So that is the moment where you need your blowout. Because by increasing the range of your skill, it reduces the chance of the enemies attacking your character. So by reducing the risk of you dying, that means that you can now clear the entire screen of enemies uh, from the safe distance. And if you are familiar with the Valkyrie floor, the higher floor you go, the stronger the enemies will get and reducing the risk of them hitting you means that you can survive for longer. Now, the thing is that if you go into the boss room, there is only going to be one on one, you and the boss. So increasing your range doesn't do anything in that situation. At that point, you need to change your blowout into epicenter because in one-on-one, -on -one, you don't need to hit anything else. So the range offset decrease here doesn't affect you that much. But the damage increase will increase your damage by a lot. This is how strong epicenter is for your fate bond. Now, if you want to see here, if I give the blowout, then you can see that my AOE will increase. Like my whirlwind will now become bigger. But if I change it into epicenter, then my AOE will become smaller. Like look at this. Like you will definitely will never be able to clear your, your Valkyrie floor in time if you are like spinning this small. <laughs> But you can, you can combine them together. So if you want to have both of them, then you can get your AOE at the normal size. But there is no point in doing this, like you, you still get the damage increase, of course. But you are actually like, you know, spending your precious Fate Bond slot for just countering each other out. So. This is epicenter and blowout. Some skills also, you can barely see the difference. Like if you see here, this is how big my fire blade war. And if I give an epicenter here, this is going to be how big my fire blade war is. You can see that the blade becomes smaller. But the range is actually quite similar. Like I cannot, I cannot hit enemies like right next to me. But I can still hit someone that is like a, at a comfortable range. So you just gotta have. That's why you just gotta have to have both fate bound in your bank and just try out whether the AOE increase and the AOE decrease, decrease works for you. Next one is multi-shot and it's it works straightforwardly like it it just works exactly as described like it's just additional projectiles but the things that you need to think about is that the damage increase is actually insane for this fate mode so the range offset reduce your range by 21st percent this is like uh, you know not going to bother you that much but the number of projectiles increased by four. So now instead of shooting one projectile, you actually shoot out five projectiles. But the damage offset for each projectile will get reduced by 40%. But the thing is that you are now shooting four projectiles, which means that you are now going to deal five times more damage if you can manage to hit all five projectiles to the same enemy which makes your 60% damage times five which means you can actually deal 300% damage if you can manage to hit every single projectile to your target so it actually gives you even more damage than the epicenter but this one is only for range. So if you are a melee and AOE character, then you definitely want the epicenter. But for a range character, you do want multi-shot. 
But there's a good thing here because sometimes for a mage and a ranged character, you can combine multi-shot with epicenter. You just gotta have to try it to your skill set if it works with both of them. So it's just straightforward, like you can see if your projectiles actually got increased and some projectiles is not so obvious like this dragon. This is considered a projectile, like what the hell? <laughs> and also this volcano, like you can see the description here, like the dragon doesn't have that uh, seconds per tick description, so this cannot be increased by onslaught, but this volcanic reef have the 0.75 second between things so this volcanic reef can be used with echo casting onslaught and multi-shot because if you have multi-shot on the number of fires coming out from the volcano is considered a projectile so the number of fire per volcano will get increased by multi-shot and with echo casting, you have two volcanoes which spews more projectiles if you have both echo casting and multi shot together. And if you have onslaught, you will shoot even more fire out of your lava of your volcano. So you can see here how fast the volcano is shooting lava out if I have onslaught on. So again, you just gonna have to try every single fate bound to your character skill and see if they can actually work or not. Because like just like the dragon, like the projectiles is not so obvious for for certain character. So that is multi shot. And to make sure that your projectiles, like all of your projectiles, can hit your target, you will need lock-on. So lock-on will make your projectiles have the ability to track your targets. But unlike all the previous fate bounds, like you don't really need three pieces set for lock-on because the difference between the lock, the second, uh, the two-piece set for lock-on and the three-piece set for lock-on, it just how much your projectiles can turn around. Like the massively enhanced lock-on effect here means that you can actually shoot someone behind your character. Like like the projectiles actually become a torpedo at this point. Like, you can just look anywhere on the map and your projectiles will definitely hit your target. But if you make sure that at least your enemy stands at 90 degrees, like 180 degrees in front of your characters, then you can already hit your enemy using the two-piece set of lock-on already. So you just gotta have to uh, uh, ask yourself whether you need the two-piece set or the three-piece set and you can actually save one extra fate bond slot for something else. So this lock on, is easy to track. Like if you, if your shot, which were spreading out just now, now aiming for your target, that means that your uh, lock on works for this skill so it doesn't work for this one because obviously like even though it makes your dragon becomes like you know uh, turning more like it can, it can actually drift but uh, it doesn't really help for my dps so i obviously don't want the lock on for my dragon and also for this one the volcano the lock on doesn't work at all like because the projectiles already hitting all over the place and you cannot actually control the the aiming of the projectile in this scenario. So again, like this fate bounce, you just gotta have to keep it in your bank and just try it out yourself for every skill set that you have. Now there is something that I haven't actually tested into detail, like in depth. Uh, because there is something that is bothering me. The multi-shot here reduces 
the damage by 40% for each projectiles that you shoot. But for a bastion, there is this skill called saturated firepower and it increases the number of projectiles you shoot. There's a chance to trigger this. And these projectiles deal 100% damage. So if I increase this skill by like to the max, it increases the number of projectiles that I shoot by 4. So by using this skill together with my multi-shot, I can shoot 9 projectiles. But what I don't know is that whether all 9 of them will get its damage reduced by 40% or only the projectiles that come out from the multi-shot that gets reduced by 40%. But even like no matter what the result is, that means that uh, the multi-shot will increase your damage further much much more than the other fate bounds that you can actually see in this game. Like even if all nines of these projectiles now deal like 60% damage, you actually times that number by 9. So you can deal 540% damage with multi-shot together with saturated firepower. And if it doesn't work like that, like all the saturated firepower projectiles heal, deal 100% damage, that means this is even better because the four projectiles that you shoot from here deal 100% damage, which means that this is 400% of your usual damage. And this one will shoot five projectiles that will get reduced by 40%. So this is five times 60%, so 300%. So in total, you deal 700% damage with all nine projectiles that you shoot as a bastion using multi-shot here. So yeah, this it's all just advantage and no disadvantage when using multi-shot and with the saturated firepower that Bastion have. Next one is Heavy Ordinance and Improved Arrows. So I grouped them together because they kind of work opposite of each other, but it's not as opposite as Epicenter and Blowout. Because Heavy Ordinance, uh, projectiles have increased damage and knockback but reduced travel speed, but the Improved Arrows increase the travel speed and pierce chance projectiles so this one slows down your projectile this one increase your projectile so there are situations where you do actually want to slow your uh, projectile and there is a chance that maybe there is a skill that you do want to increase the speed so i i haven't gone into like uh, a hybrid class that actually wants to use the improved because there are a lot of benefits of using every ordinance instead of using the improved arrow. So if you go here and look at the improved arrows, uh, Fatebound description here, it increases your projectile speed by 50%. So it offset by 150%, which means that it increases your speed by 50%. And it pierces three targets. But the thing is that an archer class already have a skill that has a chance to make your projectiles to pierce enemies. So this fate bound is kind of useless. Like maybe there's a mage out there who do want to have this, but most spells out there can already pierce your target. So there is very little uh, advantage of you to pierce your target using the improved arrow. So the only benefit that you can look forward from using this improved arrow is just the projectile speed. But whether your projectile reach your enemy faster or slower doesn't really affect your DPS much. Like, like you, you deal damage to your enemy uh, in the next second or in the next three seconds, it will still deal the same damage 
you know, it will eventually reach your target anyway. So it's better to use heavy ordinance because even though your projectile speed is half, it increases your damage by 50%. And the best thing about this heavy ordinance is that the duration is also increased by 200%, which means that the duration of your projectile is now twice as long. So for skills like a pyromancer, which can shoot out a dragon, that dragon, because it is considered a projectile, it will last two times longer. So this is my usual uh, dragon duration, but it only lasts for that long. But if I use heavy ordinance here, then this is how long my dragon is going to last. And it also makes my dragon bigger, so I can hit more enemies with this. But the, the bad news is that if I'm walking around with these dragons, that it cannot follow my movement. Like it's, it's going to be very slow in reaching the enemies. So I need to combine this with multi-shot and also aqua casting to have as many dragons as possible so they can spread out and split the enemies that they can hit with. And it's not always uh, good to have heavy ordinance. Like if you can get the benefit of the duration offset, then it is very very good. Like if you don't get any other benefit, then at least it increases your damage by 50%. So it is not as good as like backslash or, or onslaught, but it does increase your damage by 50%. So at least it is something. And sometimes, sometimes, some skill actually gets worse with heavy ordinance which is this one like the volcano even though it lasts longer but the fire also takes longer to reach the ground so uh, in the end you actually deal the same damage with the with the longer duration it just reach your enemies longer now but the size do get bigger so it's just a matter of like whether you want to use this or not and for an archer, the heavy ordinance doesn't affect them as much as my Pyromancer because their projectiles already fast to begin with. So if it gets like uh, slower by half, uh, it still reads the enemy much faster than my dragon spell. So obviously, I uh, do want the heavy ordinance more for an archer for the benefit of its damage bonus. But for a mage, you do want to look out for the duration increase because it can sometimes benefit a spellcaster more to have certain spell last twice longer. Now those are all the fate bonds that you do want to keep in your bank and try out for every single skill for every single character that you have because you might find out that you probably have a skill that have a unique combination of certain fate bounds and you can get like a lot more dps out of them so you can combine all those fate bounds and most of the time those are all the fate bounds that you are looking for in your equipment because they increase your damage by a lot and it's just straight up damage but if you are talking about utility there are other fate bonds that can uniquely increase your DPS. Next fate bond is Ricochet. And this is the most confusing fate bond for me. Because I totally have no idea how this fate bond works. Like it says here that projectiles can bounce off walls. And in the fate bond items description, it says it bounces five times. But every time I shoot at walls, it doesn't bounce. Like it does follow the wall, but there is no situation where I do want this thing to bounce and follow the wall. Like what's the use of this? <laughs> like maybe in a, in a very 
like small location like this is this is probably uh, in theory can become like a pinball but you need to shoot it at a certain angle for it to actually bounce like bam 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 but if you shoot directly to the wall it will be gone like it doesn't bounce 180 degrees back to yourself if you shoot it straight to the wall so there is there is no situation at all where you do want to use a ricochet because that means that you cannot just like i i was hoping in theory that if you shoot like in this uh scenario like this small road here in theory if this can bounce i can shoot up and it will bounce up down up down up down and it will keep hitting the same enemy over and over again so this could have actually be the strongest fate bound in this game but it doesn't work like that so this is the most uh, confusing fate bound <laughs> in this game like it's, it's totally useless for now and unless i can figure out how to make use of this fate bound so if you guys know like is there any other thing like other information that i haven't figured out from this ricochet uh please let me know in the comment otherwise this is totally useless <laughs> so next in line for our fate bound is bass and swordmaster so both of them uh, increase your damage by 50% so this is exactly the same as heavy ordinance but heavy ordinance is for projectiles while best and swordmaster is for melee so the only difference is that the swordmaster reflects projectiles like your melee attacks reflect projectiles so you can be relatively safe against the enemy projectiles if you use a skill like a whirlwind that can hit a 300 uh, degrees around your character and the best it uh, knocks your enemy further back like the effect of knockback plus 300% so this is like 400% uh, further when you knock the enemy uh, away from you but you there, there are like a, a rare very rare situation where you do want to do that like if you knock back your enemies further away from you it's just gonna take longer for you to kill your enemy so i don't really know like the advantage of using bass like you might want to use this to uh you know keep yourself alive for much longer because now the enemy will just you know cannot reach your character at all but it's it's very neat like the situation is very neat the same uh to say with the swordmaster like you can just choose to kill your enemies faster or or hit them from a range where they cannot hit you back instead of like reflecting uh projectiles but the damage increase is all right like it increase your damage by 50 percent not a hundred percent like onslaught and backslash and echo casting and finovae but if you have no other choice for your uh, fate bound then it does give uh, quite a nice bonus damage for your character next we have one of the unique fate bound in this game which is the valiant strike this fate bound greatly increases damage dealt to enemies with full life but the description is not entirely correct because if you see here in the fate bound items description it says that the bonus takes effect when the enemy life is above 70 percent so it it doesn't require the enemy to be at full life and the damage increase here is not an offset so on the two piece set you will get a damage increase of 75 percent which means that you now deal 175 percent damage your usual damage so that means that the three piece set will increase your damage by 150 percent that means that now you deal 2.5 times more damage than your usual damage so this fate bound works much better 
for a character that can deal insane amount of damage within a single hit like this ground zero for a pyromancer it deals 700% fire damage in a single hit so you can see that it full life i deal 12,000 damage using my ground zero but the moment it goes down to 75% health i no longer get the benefit of the uh, Valiant Strike and I only deal 6,000 damage there. So if you are a multi-hitter, obviously you will deal your damage in smaller hits, but, but you know, uh, a lot of them coming together. So the moment your enemy reads 70% health, all the subsequent hit that you deal to those enemies will no longer get the benefit of the Valiant Strike. But for a mage like a Pyromancer here who has a ground zero skill, if I can reduce the enemy's health to 71%, I can still get the full benefit of the Valiant Strike and actually deal insane amount of damage further reducing the enemy's health compared to the multi healer So this is one of the unique Fatebound that Warrior and Thief doesn't get much benefit compared to uh, Mage or, or Spellcaster that can deal burst damage. So if you are talking about scenario here, then if you are fighting against a normal enemy, they obviously have a lower health pool compared to a boss, so you will definitely hit them at their 100% health and you most likely going to one-shot them if you are using Valiant Strike. But in a boss fight, it will take longer for you to reduce their health down to 70% and thus you will get a longer time of benefit using your Valiant Strike. So it depends on uh, a situation where you do want to use Valiant Strike or not and whether your character can deal burst damage or not. Like, it's not, it's not just a maze, like an Aegis can also deal one single hit and with insane damage. So you just gotta have to look out for your character and your uh, hybrid class skill, which one can deal insane amount of damage within a single hit that means that it will get a lot of benefit from the Valiant Strike. Next one we have Sortie. And this Fatebound increases speed and damage when you use a death skill. And the, in the Fatebound item's description, it increases your damage by 50%, attack speed by 50%, and movement speed by 50%. But it only lasts for 2 seconds duration. So this can get triggered by a thief death skill or uh, a warrior dashing skill. But what most people don't know is that this skill can also get triggered by the Gungnir, the true piercer. If you see here, if you put Gungnir on an attack skill, then it has a different effect compared to if you put Gungnir on a buff skill. So if I use Gungnir on my True Shot Aura, you no longer hurl spears but dash in your movement direction when normally attacking. So if you put this uh, sortie and you turn on your buff skill, which I put on the True Shot Aura here, and I already activated my True Shot Aura here, so every single attack that I do will dash me forward uh, to the front and this will trigger the sortie so even though the duration only lasts for two seconds I can have this permanently on my character as long as I'm spamming my attack button so it no longer works if I don't have the buff so you can just turn this on and off so that's the benefit of the sortie like you for characters that use a normal attack a lot like for for example my bastion like i'm spamming my normal attack this sortie becomes really really strong because this just becomes your permanent buff like you will permanently get all damage 50 percent attack speed 50 percent and movement speed 50 percent all the time
And for a bastion, this also works when you are in a human bunker position. Like this skill supposed to make you unable to move, but because of the boom here, you now dash forward every time you use your normal attack. So this is the trick on how you can use your bastion into its maximum full potential. Next we have Thorn Guard. So not many players want to have this fate bound because this fate bound damages the attacker when you are hit. And the longer you play this game, you do not want to get hit by the enemies because the enemies will just keep on getting stronger and stronger and eventually they will going to one shot you. So you do want to avoid getting hit at all. And the Fate Bond item's description for the Thorn Guard is that it inflicts 150% bludgeoning damage based on hybrid attack power. So hybrid attack power takes damage from all of your stats, your strength, your dexterity, and your intelligence combined together. But the question is that whether it is worth getting yourself hit by the enemy just to inflict this bludgeoning damage. For most of the classes, it's not worth at all, but for a Storm Warden, they have a skill called Endothermic Rupture, which uh, your bludgeoning attacks cause icicles to burst forth from victims, even more so ones that are frozen and dealing increased damage, blah, 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 blah. So when dealing bludgeoning damage, it inflicts cold damage against your enemies. So Thorn Guard have a very unique interaction with a Storm Warden. But still, the question remains whether it's worth getting hit to deal this damage to your enemies or not. Obviously, for a, a lower level uh, Valkyrie floors or uh, your normal dungeon runs, like this is uh, really, really good. Like it has a very uh, nice interaction for a Storm Warden. Like it might make you grind faster your yeah like your daily grind much faster like you can just walk around letting your enemies hit you and they will die by themselves but for a very high valkyrie floor or a very high end game later on like i don't think this is worth getting hit to deal damage back to your enemies but it depends on your uh, on your usage like if you do use this for your everyday daily grinds then you can use it but for a very end game stage then it might better to go for other fate bond compared to this one next one we have flying crest so this fate bound grants bonus regular damage and defense so what they mean by regular damage is the damage with a white color so usually damage can be differentiated with the color that it comes out as the, the, uh, the number here. Like the white color means that it's regular damage. If it's red, that means that it's a fire damage. If it's blue, then uh, if it's a light blue, then it's a uh, cold damage. And if, the, if it's dark blue, then it's a shock damage. So etc, etc. So this line crest is really, really good for a physical damage dealer. Uh, because the regular damage increase is at 60% if you have 3 piece set here, which is higher than the other fate bonds like Bass or Swordmaster or the Heavy Ordinance, but it only affects your regular damage. And the good thing about this line crest is that it also increases your defense. So if you do want to get tankier, then this is a fate bond you want to go into. But there is even better interaction for this line crest for a bastion. Because bastion have a skill here that changes a percentage of your defense into more physical attack. So by using this Lion Crest to a Bastion, you actually get double the damage bonus. Because both regular damage increase and the defense increase here, both will increase your damage output. So this is in theory the best fate bound for a Bastion. Next we have Gravity Nova. So this fate bound makes your AoE skills pull enemies closer instead of knocking them back. And in the fate bound items description, 
it increase your damage by 50% which is just similar to the other faith bounds that we have analyzed previously like most of them will increase your damage by 50% and it uh, reduce the effect of knockback by 200% but the thing is that you need to actually hit your enemies for this faith bound to take effect so if they are out of your attack range then this doesn't work like a black hole that can suck your enemy closer so they can get hit by your AoE. You need to already be able to hit your enemies before you can pull them in. So it's kind of like useless because if you can already reach your enemy, then you don't actually need to pull them closer to you which makes you in risk of getting hit by that same enemy and eventually probably gonna kill you if you are at a very uh, end game stage so this one i don't know if there is any other class out there like i haven't tried every single hybrid class combination skills but probably or maybe in the future there is a, a situation where you do want them to get really really close to you so you can do, do something else to them but otherwise for most of the classes out there you do not want to get any enemies as close to you as possible like it just increase the risk of you dying and if you can already hit them why you do want to get them closer to yourself like you still deal the same damage whether do you they are far away from you or they are right next to you if you can already hit them anyway so you can use your faith bound slot for a much better faith bound compared to this gravity nova next we have concentration and for a skill spammer especially a mage this fate bound is really really good because it reduces skill cooldown and charge up time so in the fate bound items description the three piece set increase your skill cooldown by a hundred percent and charge up speed plus 60. so this might get confusing for some players obviously it doesn't mean that now your skill cooldown is longer so it means that it will reduce your cooldown but it doesn't mean that 100% will make your skill cooldown goes to zero. This just means that your skill cooldown will be twice faster now because of how peculiar percentage number works in this game. So if you have a skill like flamethrower here, it says that skill cooldown is 9 seconds. That means that now I will be able to cast this skill twice faster which means that now the skill cooldown is only four and a half seconds so for volcanic reef here the skill cooldown is six seconds so make it twice faster that means that this skill now ready for just three seconds so everything that you do will be twice faster so for a skill spammer that means that your dps output will also get twice faster which means that your dps will now be twice stronger so for the next one we have presence of mind and this just takes it even further compared to the concentration fate bound that we discussed earlier so this fate bound have a chance to reduce the remaining cooldown on all skills when you defeat an enemy and so there is no way for you to consider the dps increase if you try this on a dummy training because there is nothing for you to kill here so for a valkyrie floor this fate bound is priceless for a skill spammer and especially a mage because for every single enemy that you kill, you now have a 50% chance to reduce your remaining cooldown by 50%. That means that if you have a skill that has 9 second cooldown, you will be able to cut down 4.5 seconds of your cooldown. And if you already waited for 4.5 seconds before your presence of mind got triggered, that means that you will go straight into 0 seconds and you will be able to cast your skill right at that point in time. So the more enemies you kill, the more this presence of mind is going to trigger and the more you will be able to spam your skill. So 
it almost makes you have like zero second cooldown because eventually you will go as low as only having like one or two second cooldowns and your casting animation itself is already one second so literally you will be spamming your skill non-stop in a valkyrie floor dungeons and so your dps increase is exponential with this one you cannot test this out in the dummy training this is specifically made for a valkyrie floor dungeon and the way the charge up bonus increase here the 1.8 seconds work is that when you are charging up your charge up attack you will notice that you require certain time until it gets to the maximum charges so it just gives you 1.8 seconds worth of charging up attack so if you kill enough enemies you will eventually get your maximum charge up uh, value and you will be able to release your chance of attack just by pressing your attack button so it's just a bonus dps on top of already being able to spam your skills for the entire duration of the valkyrie clearing up time so for some classes like stormblade and aegis they have invulnerability skill and if you reduce the cooldown of this skill that means that you will now have access to cast this skill more often but the way this skill works is different compared to other skills so take this uh, take this note so this skill have seven second duration if you have resolve and only two seconds duration if you don't have resolve so if i cast this i have two second duration of when the skill will not go into cooldown it will wait until my buff is gone until my uh, invulnerability duration is finished then it will go on cooldown so while the skill is still happening any presence of mind that I get triggered will not contribute to cut my cooldown time. So only when it starts going into cooldown again, then it will be able to get cut off with the presence of mind. That means that if I manage to get 7 seconds duration of this skill, that means that I need to wait for that 7 seconds duration to be finished, and then the skill, if I have concentration, I need to wait for 4.5 seconds of cooldown, and if I manage to trigger my presence of mind, I will still need to wait for 2.25 seconds until i'm able to cast this skill again but it's enough to make me almost having invulnerability almost permanently next we have bonded summons and this is priceless for any mancer and because i don't have any mancer and uh, especially for other free-to-play players so i'm going to explain how this Fatebound works. So minions inherit the Fatebound effects of your weapon and this is kind of confusing because it's not only the Fatebound of your weapons that get inherited by your summons. Every single Fatebound that you have will now be inherited by your minions and if you only have two piece set of these bonded summons that means that if you have a three piece set of certain uh, fate bounds that means that it will get downgraded to the two piece set bonus effect and it will be given to your minions and whatever stats your minions have will now get increased by 40 percent if you have the three piece set so if i have a multi shot and lock on that means now my summon will have those fate bonds now so this is really really strong for classes that have an animator as its basic class because you will always have something to summon because that's just how the class works next we have field marshal and this fate bound increases your max number for each type of minions and this effect is half for greater summons I still don't understand what it means like bonus minion power plus 20% and plus 40%. Maybe it's more relevant for Animancer, but I don't have Animancer. But for classes like Bastion here, I this is the only class that I have a summon thingy. It has automatic arbalest and 
With this, usually Bastion can only summon one turret. But if, I, if you summon another one, the previous one will be gone. But if you have Field Marshal, then you can now summon two turrets at the same time. And if you have a uh, tree to set, then you can summon even more. That's the only benefit that you get from this paper. Like, it doesn't even increase the strength of my uh, turret because both of them still shoot relatively at the same damage, like similar damage. So, if you have any mentor and you know more about this fate mode, then please uh, leave a comment down below. So, that is Field Marshal. Next one, we have Buff Amplification. And this is just straightforward, like it increases the duration of buffs and debuffs that you cast and so uh, for 2 piece set when applying effect duration plus 150% means that you increase it by, by 50% uh, longer and for 3 piece set it increases the duration by twice. So this is really great for those classes that plays around with buffs and debuffs. Like for example if you have Aegis, like you will have this thing called resolve and once you have full resolve you will get bigger than everything you do will get increased in damage in range in everything you do and uh, for some classes you can put debuff that increase the damage the enemy take etc etc and also a dot damage and everything every single thing that you give will get increased in duration by twice so, it's kind of like situational because uh, I have a Pyronite and I have uh, the Ember Worm set which burns me and it increased the duration of burn by twice, which is not really something that I want, but um, yeah, that's a um, buff amplification. So this is really really situational, but sometimes for some classes that can actually get benefit from having a buff or debuff that lasts twice longer, then this might be an option for you. Next we have Hyper Focus, and whenever you have mana locked by a skill, you gain increased stats in proportion to the mana's lock percentage. And for every single buff skill in this game that you can toggle on and off, they will lock a certain percentage of your mana. And the strongest class for this fate bound is a Storm Warden because of how much buff skills that it this the, the class has. And the next one is Pyromancer. So 100% of those lock mana is converted to attack speed and 50% of those lock mana is converted to all damage. And it doesn't matter how much mana you have. You can have 100 mana, you can have 2000 mana, it doesn't matter. It will only count the percentage number of the lock mana. So if I am able to lock like 15% here, 15% here, and another 50% here, that means that I will lock 80% of my mana. That means that 100% of that 80% means that I will get 80% attack speed bonus and 40% all damage bonus. Well, yes, you can see here that I have all damage 16% and attack speed at 0%. If I toggle these buffs on, I will get 40% all damage bonus and 80% attack speed bonus. That's how hyper focus works. Next is critical casting. So this fate bound greatly increases crit chance for elemental damage, which means that it doesn't work for regular damage which is the white number on top of the enemy's head. So if your damage is not white in color, everything else will get the benefit of this fate bound, which is fire, cold, shell, poison, light, and dark damage. It increases the crit chance by 200% on 2 piece set and 400% on 3 piece set. So the way critical chance work in this game is unlike any other RPG game out there. Like in other RPG games, having 100% crit chance means that every single attack you do will definitely deal a critical damage and above 100% is already useless. But here you get 400%. What does it mean? So it means that 
every single skill or hit in this game have a default critical chance to hit. So if your default skill have a 20% critical chance to deal critical damage, that means that increasing its crit chance by 200% make it go up to 300% its usual crit chance. So 300% times 20% means that now you have 60% chance to deal a critical damage using that skill. So a 400% crit chance increase means that your usual 100% plus 400% means that you now have a 500% multiplier to your usual default critical chance of your skill. So if your skill have a crit chance of 20% times it by 500%, now you have a 100% chance to crit using that skill. That's how a critical chance number works in this game. So don't be shocked if you have a bonus crit chance above 100% here, because it doesn't mean that your crit chance is useless. It's just that the way a critical chance works in this game is different compared to other RPG games. So to complement the critical casting that we had previously, we now have a fate bound called Brutality. But instead of increasing just elemental damage, this one increase the critical chance and critical damage for every single damage that you deal to your enemies. So on the fate bound items description, it increase your crit chance by 60% and critical damage by 60%. But the thing is that uh, on the way the critical chance works for this game, it doesn't make all of your attacks become critical unless you have a very high dexterity stance. So unless you are on a dexterity build, then obviously not every single one of your attack is going to deal a critical damage. So that means that the benefit of this critical damage increase will sometimes happen and will sometimes not happen. So it's much better to just flat out increase your basic damage using like backslash, onslaught, pass, swordmaster, etc. etc. compared to relying on the critical damage increase here that you yourself will have a chance to trigger it using your critical chance in the first hand. So only if you are on a dexterity build, then this fate bound will be worth more compared to the best swordmaster and the other 50% damage increase because this one increase your critical damage by 60% and if you have a high dexterity stance to begin with, this will always going to trigger. So this is just a flat 60% damage increase for your character. So you need to see what kind of stats you want to build on your character first before you do want to take this fate bound. Next we have life steal and mana steal. And just like in every single RPG games out there, this is very very straightforward. 10% out of all damage you deal to your enemies will go to your mana and 10% of all the damage you deal will go to your health. But these crazy games also includes the damage from your damage over time, meaning that if you burn or poison your enemies, you will still gain health or mana out from those damage, even if you already walk away and do nothing else. So you can pretty much keep yourself alive permanently if you just keep on attacking your enemies. And this is even better if you use a summon skill attack like the dragon or the volcano that I have on my Pyronite, like even if I get stunned, those skills are still going to deal damage to my enemies. So for those classes that needs to keep on attacking the enemy, the moment you get stunned, your damage will stop. So your life steal will not be stealing life at that point forward, and while you are in the duration of getting stunned, like 1 or 2 seconds, you will have a chance to be killed by your enemies. 
So this is only as effective as how much damage you can deal continuously to your enemies and also, also how much maximum HP you have. Because we have a limited amount of strength that we can gain while we are at this stage on the game. Like the equipment can only provide you as much strength as how much HP, maximum HP that you can have from those strength. And so far, I've only seen people with around 3000 or 4000, like the highest is probably near 4000 health. And eventually, if you go to a very high Valkyrie floor, there will be uh, stronger enemies and stronger enemies. And eventually, you will meet enemies who can deal 4000 damage in one single hit. And at that point in time, it's useless to steal life back from your damage because you will die first because before you can even steal your life back. So there is going to be another way for you to survive against those enemy, which will come out in the further fate bound we will discuss. Next, we have one of the strongest fate bound in the game, Serendipity. And I'm surprised nobody has ever used this fate bound because this fate bound is borderline broken for some classes. This fate bound increases chance to trigger effects. And in the fate bound items description, for two piece set, chance to trigger effect plus 50%, and three piece set, chance to trigger effect plus 100%. And just like the critical chance, we know that percentage number doesn't work like that in this game. I guess a lot of players have tried to use this and they uh, experience themselves that it doesn't make the chance for them to trigger effect 100% of the time. So just like the critical chance, it makes your basic number get increased by that 100%. So if I have Spirit of the Buccaneer Admiral here, I have 10% chance to trigger this, increase that by another 100% means that I now have 20% chance to trigger this effect. So for some other class skills, I have 20% chance to trigger this skill and now I will have with serendipity 40% chance to trigger this. And now how does this become really really strong? Because serendipity works for every single thing in the game that has a chance to trigger. Your burning chance, your poison chance, your block chance, your double damage chance, your skill chance to come out, every single thing will get double your chance to do things will get double so if you have a skill that have a chance to come out it will double your chance to trigger that skill eventually leading to potentially increasing your dps by double the times so it also works for defensive things so if you have a block chance you now have double the chance to block incoming damage to you so it doesn't just increase your dps it also increase your survivability and for some classes some classes they have a chance to daze or freeze their enemies and what does this and freeze do? It stops the enemy from doing whatever they are doing at that point in time for one second. And for ages, every single attack that you do have a 60% chance to daze your enemies. And double that number, you now have a 120% chance to trigger. And this thing, this daze and freeze, works against boss that's how strong it is so if you try here i don't have any serendipity and every single attack that i do have a chance to daze or not to daze my enemies so with serendipity now every single attack that i do will almost always going to guarantee me two days my enemies and these enemies deal zero damage to you this is why if you get to a very high valkyrie floor later on you will eventually find enemies who can one shot you and you won't have any chance to life steal your health back but but these enemies deal zero damage to you. So this is why Aegis 
classes like hybrid classes that have ages as their basic skill class is really really strong very late game because they keep making their enemies days eventually leading to more survivability for themselves that's how strong this fate bound is the only balanced thing about this days thingy is that if the enemy is already dazed and you attack them again, it won't refresh the dazed duration. Only after the dazed animation is finished, then you can daze the enemy again. So that's just the silver lining of this fate bound. And now finally, we have come to the best fate bound in the game, Energy Shield and Divine Guard. And you need to understand how they work and why they become the best fate bound in this game. So energy shield, every time you attack, it creates a shield that can reduce the damage you take, including if you cast a skill. So you don't need to only hit using your normal attack. You can trigger this by casting a skill. So for every attack that you do, you will get 2 second duration shield with 0.5 second cooldown in between when you are going to block your damage. So if you get hit by a multi heal, not all of those damage will get blocked, only the first one and then you have 0.5 second cooldown until you can block the next damage again. And it reduces your damage intake by 30% if you have 2 piece and 50% if you have 3 piece set. And it also reduces your knockback by 50%. It increases your knockback resistance, so you will be less likely to get knocked back by your enemy. So how does this become really, really strong? It's because in a very high Valkyrie floor, like we have discussed earlier, you will eventually meet a stronger enemy that can eventually one-shot your character. So if you have a 3000 health and the enemy deal 4000 damage to you, you will not have a chance to, to life steal back your health. But with this energy shield, your enemy's 4000 damage will be reduced to 2000 damage and you can survive that damage and you will be able to life steal the, your health back again. So that's how energy shield works and divine guard is even crazier. There's a chance for you to reduce the damage you take and the damage reduction is 80%. This is insanely huge. I cannot emphasize this enough. And there's a bonus of restoring mana equal to 20% intelligence. So you don't even need a mana still fate bound. This thing can just keep your mana on full every single time. But the thing is that there is a downside to it, it has a 40% chance to trigger. But, but, we have seen a fate bound previously, which is serendipity, that can increase this chance to trigger up to 80%. That is how strong this Divine Guard is. So if you get hit by a 4000 damage, you will only receive 800 damage from your 3000 health. That is insanely huge. And that's how you can go to an even higher Valkyrie floor. But the thing is that you don't want to stack all these three fate bonds together. Because obviously, if you have too many defensive fate bound, you won't have enough damage to defeat the time limit that is required to clear the Valkyrie floor. So you need to balance between your damage fate bound and your defensive fate bound. But, but you definitely want to have at least one of these defensive fate bound, otherwise you will not survive a very high Valkyrie level because you don't even have a chance to life steal your health back because you're gonna die in one shot so that's why this is the strongest fate bound in the game and also it's because every single fate bound that we've seen previously are all dependent on your own character so if your character good gets stronger your onslaught your backlash will also get stronger but there is a limit 
Because you can only go so far as to how much strength, dexterity, and intelligence you can get from your equipment. So eventually, you will reach a limit. But energy shield and divine guard depends on the enemy damage. The stronger your enemy is, the stronger this fate bound is going to be. Because the more damage the enemy deal, the more this number will get reduced. And that's how this fate bound is a very very strong fate bound in a very very late end game. After all those fate bounds, we now come to a fate bound that pretty much if you have already reached a very high Valkyrie floor, these are the fate bounds that you want. Strength boost, intelligence boost, and dexterity boost. These fate bounds just increases 50% of your strength. Like if you have a uh, 100 strength then you will get a bonus of another 50 strength but if you only have 50 strength that you will get another 25 uh, strength bonus so if you are only increasing one specific stats like to the max then you do want to use this fate bomb but if you spread your stats in between strength dexterity and intelligence then i recommend not to take this one early on but the thing is that if you have reached a high valkyrie floor then for every single floor that you have cleared you will get a bonus stats right um scrolling between strength dexterity and intelligence so the higher floor you get the more stats you have and the more this fate bound will give an increased bonus so because you have a limited amount of stats uh, in the game this thing is really really important late game because you do want to go for your hybrid class skills eventually because with all the bonus stats that you get from the Valkyrie floor, these skills that use your hybrid attack power will combine all the strength, dexterity, and intelligence that you get and will exponentially increase your damage. Because obviously, the number here will get multiplied that eventually leads to your millions of damage that you deal to your enemies. So with my uh, 244 intellect here, I can probably deal around like 500,000 damage, so if I can at least increase this number by another 100, that means that it is an increase of 50% of my intelligence, so 50% of that 500,000 damage is another 250,000 DPS. That's roughly how you basically calculate the number. Obviously, it's more complicated than that. We don't really have the multiplication yet for uh, the formula for this one. But um, these fate bounds are really, really strong in a very late game. Once you clear enough Valkyrie floor, you do want to use all these fate bounds. This will uh, give you more DPS compared to all the other fate bounds eventually. Next we have light armor, heavy armor, and mage vestments. And you don't really need this fate bounce on your equipment because you can just get them by equipping a dexterity gear, a strength gear, or an intelligence gear. So you do want to have like all the gear on the same type. So you can get all three of them to increase your fate bound of the specific one that you actually want. So the heavy armor reduce your damage intake by 20 and increase your knockback resistance by 60%. And damage reduction in this game affects every single thing that goes into your character. So if you receive 100 damage from your enemies, you will only get 80 damage from them. And if you get a hundred poison damage you also will only receive 80 poison damage so it affects not only direct damage to you it also affects a damage over time that you will get and also includes the damage yet that you deal to yourself so for a pyromancer that can burn myself using the ember worm set 
here I have a chance to cause burn to myself, I can reduce that damage by increasing my damage reduction. So this damage reduction is really really good for certain classes. And if you do want to increase your survivability, this actually is really really strong. But eventually on a very high floor, like the enemy will deal damage to you in thousands. So these numbers will no longer be relevant, but it's gonna help you a lot when you are clearing the, the game while still progressing. Because the enemies will deal around like 100 damage, so 20 is still pretty much very very relevant for you. And then the light armor, it increases attack speed by 30% and movement speed by 20%. This is pretty much straightforward. For characters that you uh, use normal attacks a lot, then you do want to have light armor. And this is sometimes, sometimes some skills also determine their cooldown by using your attack speed. So you do need to watch out for those kind of skills. And then if you have mage vestments, this is also pretty much straightforward. It increases your skill cooldown by 40%, which means that it cuts your skill cooldown by 40%, obviously. And mana regen plus 100%. This is very strong for a skill spammer character. So uh, you can combine this with other skill cooldown reduction. They all stack. So if you are a skills member, you do need your mage vestments. Uh, if you are an attack, normal attack spammer, that you do need uh, the uh, light armor. And if you don't need both of them, like you, you kind of like a warrior and you just spin to win using your whirlwind, then you obviously don't need attack speed, you don't need a skill cooldown because it doesn't even have a cooldown. So you just better off get a heavy armor. Now finally, we have come to the final basic fate bounds that you can find in the game. The Flaming Core, the Frigid Core, the Charge Core, the Radiant Core, and the Shrouded Core. And they all basically are the same, they just of a different element. So if you have 3 piece set of those fate bounds, it increases that particular element resistance by 30, increases that particular fire damage by 60%, releases 8 projectile attacks, and inflict 100% fire damage based on hybrid attack power like this. Uh, just change the fire to all the elements that you want. So this is worth much more than just increasing your damage by 50% like from Bass or Swordmaster, but definitely not, not as good as like something like onslaught or backlash which doubles your damage output but eventually this hybrid attack power can at least um you know match the damage that you get from onslaught and the backlash because as you have known hybrid attack power will just get stronger and stronger the further you get into the valkyrie floor so this fire damage cannot really be counted as a value, like how much do you put a value on this one. And so the 60% damage increase here, you can just think of it that uh, it will keep on getting increased by this uh, more and more the more you progress through the game. And sometimes the, the resistance is also really strong because in this game a lot of enemies deal elemental damage to you and the way resistance work is very much really strong. Like it just straight up reduce the damage you take from that specific element increasing your survivability. So there are a lot of bonus that you can get from this uh, fate bound compared to the other uh, damage increasing fate bound. So you do want to see if your class character have a lot of one particular element and you just want to strengthen that particular element using these fate bounds. Next we have the end game fate bound which you can find from this NPC here where you can craft your equipment using the cards that you get from your enemies. And because these have a third fate bound, you will eventually going to grind all this gear because the more fate bounds you can have, the stronger your character will be. 
and so the first faith bond and the second faith bond here is already fixed you can already aim for which character build you want but the third faith bond that you will get after you upgrade this gear will be random so that's why you need to grind this gear in order to get the specific third faith bond that you actually want and we will go into very detailed analysis for the all these faith bound and i will show you how they work if they are worth showing but we will not be showing i will not be showing the npc specific faith bound because i haven't built any of them and they are much harder to build because for all these a uh, faith bonds here for all this gear you can just go to one single dungeon to grind all the card but for the NPC specific gear, you need to go to three different dungeons because they all use three different uh, monster cards to craft. So they are much harder to build, but the fate bonds that they give are worth much more than the other fate bonds here. So let's get into it. So first in line we have Spirit of the Boar King and it says here that it enter an enraged state when damaged but it's not as good as it sounds because you need a certain number of health in order to trigger this effect. You need to have your life below 80% to get all damage 40% increase, attack speed 30% increase, and movement speed 20% increase, and it has 2 seconds duration. This is just a, an advanced version of sortie. So if you want to use this, you need to keep your life below 80%, but the thing is that it's something that is really hard to do because you do want to keep your health at 100% all the time. So probably the only class that can use this is just a Pyronite because we can burn ourselves using the Ember Worm set, but we still need to min-max the number because if I burn myself and still get my health above 80% and regenerate my health back using my Enduring Flame, then I will not trigger this effect. So I need to min-max the number to get it just right to burn myself below 80% and I still need to heal my health back for that amount because if not, then I will slowly be dying and it's not worth getting this a fate bound over dying. So it's kind of like situational, so probably there are other classes probably in the future that can also deal damage to themselves or maybe cut off their maximum amount of health and probably that thing will trigger this effect. So this is something that is situational and also really hard to trigger. Next we have Spirit of the Grim Hole Gang and this Fate bound greatly increases the crit chance of all allies but reduces your own crit damage. At first glance, you think that this is a really good fate bound only for a co-op play. But, but there's a trick to this because you have a pet. So this is a fate bound that you want to have on your pet because your pet acts as your allies. So the one that gets the benefit of increasing the critical chance is you. So this fate bound increases, reduces the critical damage of the wearer by 60%, but friendly units in a radius of 6 meter got a bonus critical chance of 120%. This is huge, and you do want to have all these fate bounds on all your character's path because this is just a free critical chance for your character without any downside at all because the downside will be on your path and your path doesn't really do much to begin with so this is your path's best friend Next we have the Spirit of the Great River Snail, and this fate bound blocks incoming damage and counterattacks with sharp spines. It might sound great, but this fate bound only blocks the next incoming damage to your character because it has a 5 second cooldown and it inflicts 100% piercing damage based on hybrid attack power to back to your enemies. So um, if you have 
a really good dodging skills then this might be great like in case you have a hiccup once or twice in a while every five seconds otherwise there are much better faith bound to go out there uh, compared to this one unless you are aiming for the secondary fate bound or the tertiary fate bound that you can get from this uh, equipment and there is something else that is not mentioned from this fate bound because every time you trigger this fate bound it will give a debuff to your own character which reduce your defense while increasing your own movement speed so whether it is worth it getting this uh, fate bound or not depends on your dodging skills and whether you really really want those secondary fate bounds and tertiary fate bounds or not. So here is the defense break that you get when you trigger the spirit of the grave paper sneer. You will have 10 defense reduction and an increase in movement speed by 20% for 12 seconds of duration. Next we have Spirit of the Crystal Snap Claw and this fate bound makes your normal attacks have a chance to trigger a charge up attack. This is a really good fate bound for those classes that spams your normal attack. This is just an extra DPS on top of your current DPS because you don't even need to charge up your attack. You always have a 20% chance to trigger your charge up attack with a 1 second cooldown. So this is really really great for uh, a normal attack spammer but for classes like warrior who spin to win or for skill spammer like mages this a uh, fate bound is not really worth it for you because you don't really going to spam your normal attacks to trigger this fate bound next we have spirit of the sandworm this fate bound reduces damage taken from all attacks especially from behind this can be really really strong if only the ai of this game doesn't make you always facing your enemies that you are attacking so it might be really good in like you know when you are getting surrounded by enemies the enemies from behind you will reduce the damage you take by 90 percent and for those enemies in front of you, you will reduce their damage by 20%. So you eventually only receive 80% of the damage from your front and only 10% of the damage from your back. This might be situational and kind of like gambling if you use a whirlwind as a warrior because you are spinning in place. So you're just gonna have to pray that the enemy damage that comes to you hits your back. Otherwise, you will always be facing your enemies. So it's kind of like a situational using this, you know, fate bound. But it does reduce the damage by a lot. Like 90% is insane to think about. Next, we have the spirit of the Arch Knight. And this fate bound makes your melee attacks occasionally trigger crushing blows that deal massive damage. And it's kind of confusing in the fate bound items description here because the 16% chance to trigger is correct, the damage plus 400% is correct, but the range offset by 125% is kind of confusing because this thing doesn't really have a special animation to it. It just makes your normal attack sometimes have that small dazing animation that uh, makes your next attack, that, that particular attack, increase the damage by 400 percent and it's just that's just it so i don't know if there is something to this like usually if you have a range offset uh, description here means that you can increase or decrease the range by epicenter and blowout but the 16 percent chance to trigger can definitely be increased by serendipity so if you do want to try this one out like if you use a melee attack a lot like if you spin as a whirlwind then this thing will trigger a lot of times but otherwise there are still a lot of better fate bounds from this uh, card fate bounds out there next we have spirit of the triumvirate and this fate bound says that your damage type is converted to fire shock and cold in cyclical order so this will be very very 
confusing for those who haven't tried this faith bound yet. Because if you just read this sentence, you will think that, oh, now my damage will change between fire, shock, and cold uh, <coughs> in cyclical order. But it is not like that. So if you have this faith bound, you will have an icon on top of your head that is going to change every couple of seconds. So while you have this icon, if you currently have the fire one, that means that now when dealing fire damage, it will create on all damage dealt and release one area attacks inflicting 100% fire damage based on hybrid attack power, etc. etc. The same thing for the cold and the shock. So when you have a specific icon on your head and you deal that specific elemental attack, you will get the bonus and you also have a passive in uh, stats that increase your critical damage by 60 percent so this is a special fate bound just for elementalists because the only character who use all three elements this fire shock and cold is only elementalist so if you are other class and you want to use the Spirit of the Triumvirate, you will probably only get the benefit of the critical damage here and probably one of these three elements while you have the icon on top of your head. Next we have Spirit of the Buccaneer Admiral and this fate bound says that it occasionally plunders coins from enemies when you attack them. It is not. It is a very misleading sentence because you will think that, oh, then this is a money-making fate bound. You will get money if you attack your enemies. It is not. If you read this fate bound in the fate bound items description, this fate bound have a 10% chance to trigger a 400% bludgeoning damage based on hybrid attack power and nowhere whatsoever says that you get an extra money out of your enemies and it has a one second cooldown. So it's like a totally misleading sentence, but it does give you a really good fate bound because 400% bludgeoning damage and also using hybrid attack power is a really, 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 really strong attack. And it only has a one second cooldown. The only downside is that it has a very low chance to trigger. It has a 10% chance to trigger. So this is a really good fate bound if you already plan to use serendipity because it increased the chance to trigger for this effect to happen. And for classes like Storm Warden that have another bonus for dealing bludgeoning damage to your enemies, this can be something that is very much uh, interesting for your character build. So you do want to think about the spirit of the Buccaneer Admiral one more time. Next we have the spirit of the Ember Worm and this fate bound greatly increases fire damage but your attacks can cause burn to yourself. Everybody will already guess this is the fate bound for a Pyromancer and a Pyro Knight and it is correct because this fate bound is insanely strong. It increases your fire resistance plus 40 and fire damage by 120% like this is insane. It is more than double your damage and but it reduces your debuff resistance by 40% and 60% chance to trigger fire element on yourself. And I've already uh, discussed this. I've already made a video for uh, how Ember Worm set works because the burn damage comes from your hybrid attack power so your own damage will be the one that is killing yourself so if you do want to survive getting this fair element if you are a strength based build then you probably don't have nothing to worry about because most likely you will use a heavy armor which reduces your damage uh, taken from burn and also your strength stats will increase the maximum HP that you have and while you don't have any other stats on your dexterity and intelligence your hybrid attack power will not be that high 
But if you are a mage, you will definitely want to increase your intelligence stats, making you having a low health pool to begin with, and if you happen to need maximum HP, you definitely need to split your stats between intelligence and your strength, which will eventually increasing your hybrid attack power and will make this fire element deal insane amount of damage to yourself. So, you do want to reduce the damage you take either by damage reduction from heavy armor, from energy shield, or divine guard. So, at least now you can survive or there is another trick that you can just not take the igneous transmutation because this thing change your intelligence to attack power which increase your hybrid attack power by twice. Because this is such a strong skill to have for a Pyronite. So it is like a, a really really good fate bound for every single Pyromancer and Pyronite out there. But it only probably works for a Pyronite because Pyronite have an enduring flame which will increase your life regeneration and heal yourself whenever you burn yourself and there is an extra interaction for a Pyronite here because Pyronite using a spirit of the Ember Worm means that you are constantly dealing damage to yourself which means that you are constantly triggering this effect so you are healing every single second out there so you are pretty much immortal when you are using this spirit of the Ember Worm if you can have your heal to be higher than the fire damage that you take. Next we have Spirit of the Alpha Yeti and this Fate Bond occasionally expels damaging frigid blasts around you when you attack. And in the Fate Bond item's description, it says that when attacking 0.4 seconds between ticks, release one area attacks, 4 meter range, and inflict 60% cold damage based on hybrid attack power. So as you all know from all the Fate Bonds that we've seen so far, that 0.4 second between ticks means that this thing can be increased by Onslaught. And also the 4 meter range can be increased or decreased by blowout and epicenter. So this is a really strong fate bound for a storm blade and a storm warden, especially a storm warden. Because this only happens around your character. Like this is how big the area of the frigid blast. So if you are not a melee character or you don't get close and personal to your enemies, you won't deal the damage to them. So this is uh, like, you know, for a Tempest Mage based class, you will definitely want to think about using the Spirit of the Alpha Yeti for your build. Next we have the Spirit of Zulan. And this fate bound have a chance to summon a large area of consecrating light when you attack and it's not as beautiful as it sounds here if you read it in the fate bound items description because in the fate bound items description when attacking you have 20 percent chance to trigger a 16 area attacks it does sound nice 16 area attacks but the two meter range kind of like give this thing away like if it is an consecrating area why it has only two meter range like that is very very small for a 100 percent light damage based on your hybrid tech power so if you have already tried the spirit of the Zulan, you will see here, I'm gonna try it out for you guys to see, that is the consecrating light, it's not an area, but it's a laser coming down from the sky. So the 2 meter here means that it is the area of the hitbox per laser, and the thing is that the laser itself is random, like look at that, I have my dummy here, but the laser just hitting everywhere. So if you use a blowout at every center, which is in theory is going to increase the two meter range, it is totally not worth it. Because a two meter range increase, even if you can double it, which uh, blowout doesn't really even 
double your area, like it only increased by 70%, it only can increase your area by 4 meter, which doesn't really change much because of the random nature of the laser itself. And the 16 area attacks, if you use multi-shot, it does increase the number because the number is already high to begin with. It is not really worth it to increase the projectiles by another four projectiles because now all of your projectiles will have lower damage. So the only thing that you want from the Spirit of Zula is if you already use a Serendipity. Because with Serendipity, the chance for summoning this area attack becomes really really high. Now you can see that it's really easy now to trigger the uh, consecrating light attack if I don't miss my attack. So it's much better and more bearable compared to without serendipity. Even look, even with serendipity, I still hardly ever able to summon this attack. Although uh, you can uh, debate that it's because I only have two P set, which only have 10% chance to trigger. So increasing by 50% is only increasing this by 5%, but it does make a little bit of difference. So if you have three set of Zulan and three set of Serendipity, then it might be worth it taking this fate bond. But for me, in my opinion, it will probably be only ever worth it if you use a light damage to begin with. Like if we in the future have a class that have a light damage built in into their class build, then it is worth taking the Spirit of Zulan. Otherwise, this is too random for you to get the benefit, like the full benefit out of this fate mode. Next we have Spirit of C6H Bok, and this fate bound gives you growing power as you defeat enemies in succession. And so if you keep on killing enemies in stages where there are tons of enemies like Valkyrie Floor, you will have this fate bound as your permanent buff. So on defending enemy, you get attack speed plus 8%, movement speed plus 8%, and charge up speed plus 8 with 4 seconds duration and stacks up to 8 times. So if you can continuously kill enemies, you will have a permanent buff of 64% attack speed, 64% movement speed, and 64 charge up speed bonus. So for classes that use normal attack speed a lot, like Archer, then this is a really really good fate bond, especially if you are pushing in Valkyrie floors or maybe uh, some other stages, like if you can continuously kill enemies, this is a really really good fate bond for you, but for a skill spammer and also uh, a warrior with whirlwind build, this is definitely not something you one because you only get the bonus from the movement speed, you don't really use the attack speed and charge up speed is situation. So that's Spirit of C6H Bomb. Next, we have an insanely strong fate bound from the card equipment set. The Spirit of the Black Knight, and you probably have seen this a lot of times in a lot of YouTube videos, but you probably doesn't understand how it works and why it becomes so popular. This fate bound gives you a chance to cause bleeding when you deal slashing damage, and it gives an unfair advantage for certain classes. So, this fate bound in the fate bound items description, it only says you have 33% chance to trigger bleed, and that's it. But why it becomes so OP is because if you understand how bleed works, then you will realize how strong this thing is. So, the bleed works like this. Once you hit your enemies, you have a chance to put a swirling purple fire on the enemy's character. And this is not considered a debuff, so you cannot prolong this thing using buff amplification. And after certain time, this fire thingy will be gone. But if you manage to stack four of this fire thingy, purple fire thingy on your enemies, it will explode and deal percentage H, maximum HP of your enemy as damage. So just like how I explained about energy shield and divine guard, the stronger your enemy gets, the stronger this effect is going to be because it will follow the strength of your enemies. That's why for classes that use slashing damage, which is mostly only warriors and thieves, they 
can use this set and they have multi hits a lot of skills that can multi hits so it is becomes really easy for them to stack blitz until until four stacks and it makes them easier to kill bosses because bosses have a really really high hp and this bleed just cut out that percentage hp by itself so the stronger the enemy gets the more damage you will deal to them and it just gives you a, a really fast time in killing bosses so that's why in a very high Valkyrie uh, stages, most classes, like some other classes, they will have a hard time with the time limit to kill the enemies because the, the higher floor you get, the more HP and defense and other stats your enemies will have and it takes you longer to kill them because like I said, you have a limited amount of strength and dexterity and intelligence to give to your own character. So you will always going to deal the same DPS from your dummy training to your enemies but not the same case for characters who use bleed because the stronger your enemies be the more damage this bleed will get will give to your enemies that's how strong bleed is that's why bleed is being sought out sought after by a lot of players and why the black knight set is really really popular next we have spirit of the slime and i do want to group this together with the spirit of the mandragora elf because they both do exactly the same thing just with different elements so but the spirit of the slime is dealing shock damage has an additional chance to cause elements the same thing for the mandragora elf dealing poison damage has an additional chance to cause elements and in the fake on items description the spirit of the slime says that when dealing shock damage you have 20% chance to trigger shock ailment and 10% chance to trigger daze so for skills that can already inflict shock ailment this will add another chance for you to give another shock ailment to your enemies so um giving them two debuffs at the same time and the thing that is really really good in here is the 10% chance to trigger days. So like we have seen in the previous Fatebound uh, analysis that days is a really really strong debuff because it stops your enemies from doing anything that they are doing at that point in time and they cannot do anything to you and this works against bosses. So this might be a solution for characters who doesn't have a built-in days skills in their skill set. So, but the thing is that it has only 10% chance to trigger, so you definitely need serendipity to increase this chance. And the same thing for Spirit of the Mandragora Elf, it has the same thing but with poison, 20% chance to trigger poison element, and 10% chance to trigger this Orion. I haven't actually tried this disorient yet, but based from its name it's most likely gonna be the same as days like it's gonna stop your enemies from doing anything that they are doing at that point in time but i'm not really sure about this yet so for those of you who have tried this uh, let me know in the comment but this is a, a fate bound that you do want to pair together with serendipity definitely if you do play around with debuffs a lot and the chance to trigger this can get increased by serendipity. That's why serendipity is again one of the strongest fate bound because it makes every other fate bounds viable or even stronger than they actually do. Next one, we have Spirit of the Golden Snap Claw, and this Fate Bound automatically charge power when not attacking. In the Fate Bound items description, also it says here only that uh, charges up automatically, and if you have the three piece set, it gives you a bonus or charge up speed plus thirty. So this gives you a chance to have this like i'm not pressing anything but my character is just charging its attack on its own and i can just press normal attack one and i will trigger my charge up attack and it will charge my uh, skill again my charge up attack again automatically but it does have a weird interaction with a warrior 
because for a warrior you're supposed to gain battle last when you are charging up your attack so if you use it like if you if you wear this fate mount it will automatically charge your battle last with you so this is definitely really really good for a warrior but the thing is that the moment you spin wait let me change the, my weapon so the moment you spin it will stop charging now it will go down slowly and even if you stop spinning it will still go down you need to release your attack first and then after that it will charge up again that's how this thing works so you need to be careful if you do think that oh i'm gonna take the whirlwind and now i no longer need to use the battle frenzy with the golden snap claw i can just use the poise to kill to keep my battle last at 10 stacks then you need to think again because it doesn't work for whirlwind slash you need to turn on and off the whirlwind slash and actually use your charge up attack to release this thing out of its i don't know if it's a bug or is it intended but to reset this thing from charging up again you need to release your charge up attack and actually use it if you are spinning using whirlwind that's how it works but for some other classes for other classes this will just add a bonus dps on top of what you are uh, currently doing for your combo but it if it's for a phone it might be hard for you to charge it up attack while doing something else but if you are playing on a computer then this kind of like um being a little bit useless because you can actually just charge up your attack using your keyboard while doing something else because you have so many buttons on your keyboard you can have just one of your finger uh, keeping charge up your attack and the other fingers pressing your other skills so this is kind of like debatable whether you do need this fate bound or not but the fate bound that comes together with this spirit of the golden snap claw are a really really good fate bound one is the strength boost and the other one is a concentration which will definitely increase your damage output next we have the spirit of the mandragora and this fate bound grants immunity to poison damage and increases life regen and in the fate bound items description it says that on taking certain damage i'm guessing this is gonna be poison damage offset by 20 percent which means that it reduces the damage you take by 80 percent and restores life equal to 10 percent strength and giving you life regen for 200 percent more this is crazy and the thing is that I haven't actually gone into detail with this uh, fate bound set, but if this is like on taking certain damage can apply to some other damage aside from poison, then it's either a bug or something is very very wrong here. Because reducing the damage you take by 80% is insanely high. That is too high to make this available for a lot of types of damage that can come to you but the life restoration and life regen is pretty much um you know welcome so in a very high later on like this is because this is specific against a poison damage you can use this if you have trouble staying alive against poison enemies because poison gets stronger the higher you go and sometimes even if you are in invulnerability state poison damage still deals damage to you that is stupidly stupid for an rpg game here so uh, the only way for you to survive a poison damage while in invulnerability is for you to use this set there is no other way in a very high valkyrie floor where well, poison is very much fatal to your character next we have spirit of the medusa this fate bound gives you more damage to enemies further away but less damage to enemies nearby and in the fate bound items description it says that it gives you a bonus of 20 percent damage per meter in between you and the target you are dealing damage 
and it doesn't mention anything here that uh, how much less damage you are deal to enemies uh, nearby but it is around like 20% something so it doesn't really hurt you that much but the increase in damage is huge because this is per meter you can always keep your enemies at the corner of your screen and you will deal maximum damage out of this fate bond and it doesn't only work for projectiles not something that you can throw from your position to your your enemies a summon skill also works for this so if you notice that for a pyromancer i can put down a volcano and a dragon but it will come right on top of the enemy that i'm hitting but it will still count the distance between me and my enemies even though my volcano is right underneath the enemy the damage bonus will still be considered increased if i myself is further away from the enemy so this works for all summoned minions too and even if you cast the skill while you are right next to your enemies and then afterwards while the skill is still dealing damage you move further away the damage will get increase so it doesn't only happen while you first summon your thing it will continuously update the number as you are walking around the map so you want to always keep your enemies at the corner of your screen if you and if you are a ranged dps this is a very very strong fate bound for you and an extra note this doesn't work for damage over time so you cannot just put a burn or shock or a poison damage to your enemies like a poison debuff and then just walk to the end of the earth and watch your damage increase like a thousand percent like it doesn't work like that it will be like insanely op if that can work but yeah it doesn't work for a damage over time from a debuff but it works for a damage over time that comes from a skill like a summon skill like a volcano or a, a, a dragon i don't know what other summon skills you have for other classes but those are the examples that i can think of next we have spirit of the skeleton king and this fate bound gives you a chance to summon skeleton minions when you defeat an enemy as you have probably guessed this is the best fate bound for animancer because Animancer have skills that can increase the strength of their minions. For other classes, this is just an extra minion on your part. Like you don't have any skill that can strengthen your minion. But if you do have Bonded Summons or Field Martial, then you can probably combine it together with the Skeleton King. But again, it will be uh, much much better on the hand of uh, an actual Animancer. So in the per 3 piece set of this fate bound on defeating an enemy 15% chance to trigger summon one followers at 140% power based on hybrid attack power this is just basically how much damage they deal if they attack uh, your enemies and maximum number of summons is 6 so for field martial you can increase the maximum number of summons here and for serendipity you can increase the chance to for this to trigger and for bonded summons all of your minions this skeleton will have your uh, fate bounce so that is spirit of the skeleton king like it just transform your other class into an animancer and it further enhances your the strength of your actual animancer Next, we have Spirit of the Archwizard, and this Fate Bound increases dexterity based on intelligence. And just like it says, it will convert 50% of your intelligence into dexterity. So if you have 1000 intelligence, you will get 500 dexterity for free. That is huge. That is like insane amount of stats. And for some classes, like the Pyronite, you have already have igneous transmutation which convert 75 percent of your intelligence to attack power so these stats will combine together with the spirit of the arch wizard so that means that you will get a bonus of another 125 percent stats out of your intelligence if you just keep stacking your intelligence with intelligence boost 
this is insanely huge for a pyronite and those stats will all combine together into a hybrid attack power so all these hybrid class skill damage will get increased by a lot it's just not for pyronite like if you only use the spirit of the arch wizard this definitely will increase your uh, hybrid class skill power but for a pyronite it just enhances it even further because of it being standard mutation so for all of you players who have already reached like a very high value floor, you already have a lot of those strength, dexterity, intelligence, extra stats. So all of your hybrid skill class are already stronger than your basic class uh, skills. So eventually, everybody will need to change to a hybrid class build and just make use of any of this skill set build. So if I go with the Fireblade Ward, I will go with Echo Casting and Epicenter, etc, etc. If I go with Fiery Smite, obviously I need to go melee and uh, multi-hits to trigger this a lot and that will pair really really well with the Whirlwind Slash. But this Whirlwind Slash is based on attack power, so I need the Red Ring from the Ember Worm to change this into a Fire Elemental Damage and then I will have a very very strong build for a Pyronite. That's just an example. So you see that a lot of players haven't reached the very end game build in this game. So you can consider that whatever you've seen in the leaderboard right now, they can go even further. So this is one of the example of playing around with stats because this uh, translates into more hybrid attack power. Next we have Spirit of the Goblin and this fate bound recovers life and mana when defeating an enemy and just like it says uh, in the fate bound items description you will get mana equal to 8% of your intelligence and you get life equal to 16% of your strength every time you kill an enemy so this is nice to have it's not uh, something that you do want but what you do aim from this set is the a secondary fate bond that comes with it, the multi shot. So this one is an extra thingy. Like for example, I use it for my Pyronite because of the burn damage that I deal to myself and also of how a uh, mana inefficient this battle frenzy is. Like this continually draining my mana. So I need a way to recover my mana. And if I use a mana steal, it's just a waste of space. So I can use this together with the spirit of the goblin because this is just basically having a inferior lifesteal and inferior mana steal in one single fate bound. So that's how you make use of the spirit of the goblin. Next we have Spirit of Varkalin and with this feed bound, enemies you attack are marked with dark power and take additional damage after a short delay. And it does say so in the feed bound description that it inflicts 200% dark damage based on hybrid attack power with 0.75 second duration. This is the duration for the explosion to take effect, takes up to 5 times. So how does it work? Here, here is it. I'm going to show you how it works in the dummy. So if you hit the dummy, you will always put a circle purple martini on your enemy. And after after 1.5 second or if you have 3 percent after 0.75 second duration it will explode so if you don't wait for this duration it will never explode and you won't receive the 1000 percent dark damage that you get from five stacks of this debuff so if you just keep on attacking your enemy this debuff will never explode so it depends on your playstyle. If your playstyle requires you to get away from your enemies even for one second to do something else or even if you want to stay alive and running away from the enemy's uh, damage, then this thing will explode. Otherwise, if you never run away from your enemies and just keep on dealing damage to them, it is useless to have this fate bound because it will never do anything that is written in here. So you need to think about your own playstyle first to consider using the spirit of Varkalin. But 1000% 
a dark damage from this explosion is a really nice extra DPS that you can get from using your hybrid attack power. This is this is nice, and you can use the shrouded core to enhance this damage even further. But the thing is that we don't have a class that really specializes in dark damage, so you do need to make your own dark damage build class. Now next one we have Spirit of Anubis. And this Fate Bound grants a one-time recovery when you take Fatal Damage. Yes, just like it's written there, you will have a chance to uh, cheat death with this Fate Bound. If you have... Where is it? If you have this Spirit of Anubis for a 3-piece set on taking Fatal Damage, you restore life equal to 400% of your strength and restore mana equal to 400% intelligence. It doesn't restore your mana if you only have 2-piece set, and it has a 300 second cooldown for the 2-piece set, and a 120 second cooldown for the 3-piece set. So if you know you will die like in a, in a very high difficulty dungeon, if you're gonna die, you can try to use this fate bound, and you can run around for 2 minutes to wait until this thing cooldown is finished and just uh, use this fate bound again, uh, eventually leading to you never going to die. But still, it is questionable because uh, there are other ways to increase your survivability and some other fate bound are much better to use it to increase your DPS. So this thing is just situational, but if you need a cheat that ability, then this is the only fate bound that can prevent your death every two minutes. Now, like I said earlier, I don't have any of the NPC specific equipment, but we can analyze all of this gear and see how it actually can work. So, starting off with the Spirit of the Night, this Fate Bound hits against enemies are guaranteed to land, but you can no longer deal critical hits. This is complemented really, really well with the strength boost that comes with it. Because this means that if you can no longer deal critical hits, it will be useless for you to increase your dexterity stats. And it is also worth it because your, your hits are guaranteed to land, so you don't even need your dexterity. Because for a physical damage dealer, your attack have a chance to miss if you don't increase your dexterity. It's not a problem for a spellcaster because spell will always hit. But for most uh, physical damage dealer, you need to increase your dexterity and also your strength for your maximum health and your chance to hit. But using this set, you can just fully invest your stats into strength. And also with the strength boost, all those strength will get increased even further. So this is a really really strong fate bound for an endgame character which can just have you fully invested into a single strength stat that can increase both of your maximum HP and also your damage. Now we have the spirit of the paladin and this is like the, the opposite of the spirit of the knight because while the spirit of the knight just go fully infested into your damage now the spirit of paladin gives you a chance to grant invulnerability for a short time after you are attacked and that is insane because you can just totally ignore the enemy's damage for a certain period of time and it also complemented with the energy shield that comes together with this set this is just a pair made in heaven like you can become immortal with this set this is like really really strong for you but the downside is just it doesn't help your dps at all so if you are a class or a character that totally become a glass cannon like you you build yourself as a glass cannon or your class just force you into making a glass cannon then this set can help you a lot in your survivability because you can just totally ignore the damage that your enemies deal to you while you can just focus on dealing as much damage as you can from your class set, skill set and build. Next we have Spirit of the Werewolf and this Fate Bound restores life when you defeat enemies. So while I don't know why they have this is that 
you life still basically do the exact same thing and you also have the spirit of the goblin that can heal your life and your mana at the same time so what is the use of this fate bound unless the life that you restore is really really high but again a life still because we deal your damage until million of numbers then your life still itself already over heal you so you don't really need the another fate bound that can restore your life with an, an a requirement on top of that you need to defeat enemies first before you can recover your life so and also the best here is not the best we've already seen this in the fate bone uh, explanation and compare it to other fate bone like this kind of defeat the purpose of having this fate bone like you know you don't really want to have this fate bone unless they give something extra that is hidden uh, that is not mentioned in this sentence so if you have the spirit of the werewolf and, and you know it gives something else uh, aside from just healing your life then let me know in the comment otherwise it's not worth it to just restore your life if you kill enemies while you have a life steal that can restore your life every time you attack next we have spirit of the berserker and this fate bound grants the enraged effect when you score a crit and this is quite similar to the a spirit of the boar king because this also give enraged effect when you are damaged so if we go into the boar king uh, fate bound items description here you can just change the life requirement into a critical chance uh, that can trigger this so the bonus that you get is all damage bonus attack speed bonus movement speed bonus i expect this to be the same on the berserker set but if they do want to change the stats then uh, maybe it's some other stats or maybe the number is different i don't know but if you do have a character that scores a lot of critical hits then you do want to try thinking of using the berserker set if you do make use of the concentration fate bound because this one is just uh, something that can be triggered all the time because with the dexterity stats you already have a high critical chance to begin with so this you can count this as just a permanent buff for your character unlike the spirit of the boar king which is really hard to trigger next we have spirit of the rogue and this fate bound enhances your ability to crit for a short duration after a death and i'm guessing this also increased the critical damage that you deal so if you are a character that use a death ability then you can trigger this pretty much every time before you do your damage and if you think that you need the presence of mind we already seen how good presence of mind is then this is a fate bound for you so the, the best example that i can think about is my Stormblade because if you are a Stormblade build that makes use of the Electromorphosis then you definitely gonna cast your death first before you use your Electromorphosis and because Electromorphosis have a really long cooldown while you are uh, waiting for that cooldown you can kill your enemies using some other skill and that will trigger the presence of mind and refresh the duration of your Electromorphosis making you invulnerable for a longer period of time and because you you're always going to press your death every time you uh, want to cast your electromorphosis then this fate bound will get triggered every single time for your electromorphosis so the critical chance and critical damage of your electromorphosis will get enhanced so that's how you make use of this fate bound if you need all this effect then this is the fate bound that is really really good for your character build and now we have spirit of the mage and this fate bound at regular intervals your normal attacks will cause the last skill you use to be recast so this is just like echo casting but you trigger it using your normal attack so if you think about it it's just like whether you want echo casting or this one but no if you have the same thing that works exactly similar 
you must stack them together because that means that you now have two echo casting that you can trigger at the same time so if you cast your skill and then afterwards you get echo casting triggered and that skill get casted twice you use your normal attack and you will cast a third time of the same skill and if you have a twin novi on top of that you will cast the same skill twice again and that is insane and what i haven't tried is that whether the skill that you cast using this uh, spirit of the mage can also be doubled by the twin novi or not that will be insane if you can trigger the twin novi twice once while you are echo casting once while you are using the spirit of the mage but that will is just wishing too much uh, without the twin novi uh, triggering twice it's already insane enough being able to cast your skill four times at the same time and it is also complemented really well with the intelligence boost on the secondary fate bound because this is really really a, a nice pair for a spell caster because if you rely on your spell a lot you will definitely know which spell deals you the most damage and you can just trigger that skill using the spirit of the maids and double or triple your dps output with this and intelligence boot like i said this is a very late game uh fate bomb which gonna increase your damage output by a lot if you are stacking intelligence and intelligence can also be translated a lot like for example if you have the art wizard set those intelligence can also contribute to your dexterity and if you are a pyro knight that those intelligence will also transform into your attack power so that's how good this spirit of the mage is now we have spirit of the elf and this fate bound shoots two additional projectiles after performing a certain number of attacks so just like the spirit of the mage this is similar to multi shot but you don't compare it to multi shot you need to stack them together so these have a requirement of doing a certain number of attacks first and only gives two additional projectiles so i'm assuming or expecting that the two additional projectiles doesn't have a damage reduction like a multi shot do but this one definitely is really good if you combine together with multi shot or other things that have a benefit from getting a multi shot we also get a benefit out of this skill uh, this fate bound and the secondary fate bound is also complementing really really well because like i said strength boost intelligence boost and dexterity boost is a late game fate bound so this is really really strong for a dexterity based class and you do want to have this uh, fate bound at the very late game end game for your dexterity class and for certain class like the artilleries it can transform the dexterity you have into magic power so for a spellcaster the extra projectiles here is kind of like debatable because you don't really want the dexterity if you go for the intelli intelligence build but for artilleries this is very very welcome and last one we have spirit of the cleric and this fate bound deals extra light damage to enemies with the light element but the thing is that up until now i still have no idea what light element does and also the dark element because the other element are pretty much obvious the fire shock and the poison deals damage over time the cold one are frozen enemies like freeze enemies in place so the light and dark is kind of like not so obvious like you cannot uh, click the debuff on the enemies and see what it does but if it does have something to do then this is probably the fate bound that can make use of the light ailment uh, deals extra damage to enemies with the light ailment so that's how you make use of the light element and it also comes with the radiant core so if you do make a character build with light elemental as something in your mind then this is the set to go for but otherwise it is much better to just focus on your character class specialization and just strengthen what your class is already good at compared to build an entirely new element maybe in the future if we have a class that make use of 
the light element, then we will see the usage of this set. Uh, but right now, this set is either still unknown or pretty much undesirable. Now as a bonus, I also have the Spirit of the Noel Rex and also the Icicles Coalescer, which is a special fate bone where you can get it from Winter Event 2023 that already closed a week ago. So this fate bone gives you a chance to summon a Frostian upon freezing enemies, the Frostian will assault enemies and reduce their cold resistance, which is really good because there are not many skills that can reduce the enemy's cold resistance. So. A 3 set when applying freeze, 50% chance to trigger, summon 1 Frostians at 140% power based on hybrid attack power and maximum number of summons is 6. So if you have learned every single fate bound up until this point, you will know that this number can be increased by the uh, field marshal, the number of summons, the strength of the Frostian can be increased by the bonded summon, but the thing is that the Frostian only explode to your enemies so unless it is a damage increasing fate bound the other fate bounds doesn't do anything to the frostian and the chance to trigger can be increased by the serendipity and for the icicles this just straight up change your icicle skill into an entirely new different skill so this is the new icicle it shoots a snowball in front that shoots an icicle around it and you can increase the number of icicle using uh, multi shot. You can echo cast this, and you can uh, increase the size by heavy ordinance. And also, this is the frosty. So, if you attack your enemies, there's a chance for you to summon this snowman that can explode to your enemies and reduce the cold resistance for your enemies. So, this is really good if you want to build a magic tempest mage. So, yeah. That's all the fate bounds that I have. I don't have the other uh, red legendary fate bounds, but those are all the fate bounds that you can find in this game. Last but not least, I would like to say there is no such thing as a best class build. And also there is no such thing as a single tier list for everything. There is only situational build and all the videos out there that you have been watching are only for the current endgame content and that specific playstyle. And it also depends on the player who make that tier list because it is always going to be subjective. When update comes, balancing comes, new dungeon comes, and new difficulty opens, every best build out there will become obsolete. But not if you understand your own class, your own playstyle, your own tools and arsenal, how Fatebound works. If you understand how to build your own character, you can build anything for any scenario out there. You want to build a character specifically for grinding card? There you go. You want to build a character to grind level? There you go. The best type of build is when you bring 10 different sets for 10 different scenario for the same character. And that's how you are able to defeat anything. So hope you guys learned something from this video and thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.